been about a month. Um, welcome back. So today we will cover um, they cover a few topics. Hopefully you've already looked at the at the slides and, and seen it and seen what I'm going to cover. But um, if you haven't, that's good. So today we will go over maybe some of the prior concepts over something related to economics, something related to uh, crypto economic systems, and then kind of dive into a specific project to maybe um, explain uh, how, how it all connects in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things and, uh, you know, go, go from there for the workshop. Some of them may be more technical, some of them may be more uh, project related, some of them may be different. So, um, yeah, definitely a lot of different ways to do this. So decided we can start off with um, the very popular project everybody hopefully knows, Axie Divinity. Um, with interminative impact, it's probably the biggest, most traded um, token project for um, NFTs and, and, and collectibles and people making money. So uh, yeah, let's get into that. So we'll kind of go over for today the more of the the gam the, the the you know the, the gamify or the the game fi game financer the play to earn business model and then kind of cover how uh you know that kind of relates to uh all the financial aspects of maintaining uh, a healthy crypto economic system and uh, a model to visualize uh, agent behavior um so yeah, we'll start with the project and go over some background, do some uh, analysis of the token mechanism for the, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the tokenomic system, and then talk a little bit more about in, in, in detail how the project is um, specifically working in this industry. Uh, so yeah, uh, a good review would be to say, looking at, um, you know, like the, 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 the loop, uh, you know, kind of what goes in and then what goes out over here. If you look at the the, the economic system, the central bank controls the flow of money and government purchases creates money that goes through the whole loop, goes through consumers, goes through banks, goes through everyone, everything else and uh, the rest of the world. And that's trade. Um, so the government kind of creates, you know, money between the financial system to make the money flow around. Um, and that's similar to how you have to you have to treat a project because you're serving as a central bank. <laughs> that's how it's all related. And the money flow, maybe what we discussed in a different workshop, was related to how we can divide money that's um, in in institutional hands, so people with with big money, and then um, you know, kind of like banks or or central banks that have the money, and then versus money supply here, M zero, which is consumers who contain physical paper and currency and um, you know, just kind of uh, maybe commercial banks have bank reserves, but it, it contains a vast majority of money flow. Um, and then that's also another way to measure money supply. Um, and and uh, you know, you know, kind of getting into um, the real system, uh, which is kind of specific for this project. Um, it's good to kind of start with the bullet points, maybe, but. I, I guess kind of the governing piece here is kind of to, kind of to say that there's uh, one governing entity which kind of controls the flow of the money. Um, so so that governing entity is kind of uh, you know the the Axie ecosystem. So that's right here. <laughs> I don't think they did they did a good job of visually representing where the the treasury or the the um, you know after FTX and all that. I'm presenting something so. It, you know, kind of where people would say that the, the, the money account is or where um, the corporate treasury exists. Uh, that's the money that doesn't go anywhere else except stays in, in the ecosystem. It doesn't leave this blue box. Um, so that's how you have to divide these up is by, you know, rectangles and entity, entities which control certain aspects of money. Um, you know, the way this Axie ecosystem works really is um, the way that this, that this game works is essentially, if anyone wants me to cover the game, uh, it's a game similar to Pokemon where, you know, you can kind of battle and raise and gain experience of imaginary creatures. And then that allows you to breed 
and sell these game characters. So that's kind of what the play to earn is, is you're earning money, like tokens or money by selling characters or Pokemon or these Axie thingies, these Axies, um, Axies. Uh, and then you make, you know, some amount of money by um, maintaining a good game character. Uh, and that that's kind of money that you can exchange for game tokens to get real currency which you can you know kind of exchange and get money out of and um so this is the outside ecosystem this is the axie ecosystem so if you want to make money you can um sell axes and earn eth here or you can um breed them and, and produce axes by, by by breeding them and doing that in the video game <laughs> so um play to earn is kind of it, it it has to have a visual representation of you know uh what's being traded inside and outside so the rest of the world is here imports and exports um and, and the financial system people who control the big money the same thing applies here is you have the ecosystem that's the, the, the project holders who maintain the most money here we'll go into that more in the presentation don't worry about that but then knowing where the players are able to exchange and make make money is important so that you know um you know what are these tokens so you know the, the tokens that that's in axi infinity is the the axs and the slp tokens um and uh token holders can typically typically exchange for fiat or currency or hold on slp to speculate so you can either hold on slp tokens um to speculate and maybe make more money over time to, um to holding those tokens or you can use axs tokens to exchange it for actual uh dollars to, to pay yourself with money and um use it for payment purposes so there's different purposes and that's how the economy functions it's for players who want to play and make money token holders want to invest um you know and then big players who have own a lot of the money um and the owning part of the money is kind of uh, where the tokenomics explains, you know, how the money is getting managed. Um, uh, I, I try to use the economics example to show that, like, uh, there really is supposed to be a central actor who who holds a lot of the money and controls um, the liquidity because um, today people who have a big stake in FTX have lost all their money because there's no simple... <laughs> um uh li li liquidity management system or risk management system so at this point i think um after having presented this much i feel like risk management is definitely a piece of of what tokenomics is and um it, it explains that you know uh the entire ecosystem you know you have the big picture you know um you know tokenomics i think from all these presentations that i've given you can show how you have certain players who manipulate a lot of money, um, and those are agents. And then you have to use code to basically figure out how to, um, you know, steer the agents away from having large amounts of control. Um, and, and that's what the games can do here. Uh, it, you'll see over here, um, specifically allocation of tokens. That's like which percentage of people will have access to the tokens. Only 20% of the players. Only 20% of tokens are um in in ownership with players so there's a very small amount of tokens that are still in the marketplace today there's a lot left to um open up and uh, be and and uh and create more circulation so uh so really like the most important thing to say is the the tokenomics is uh a, a way to show that um there's enough ways for money to be exchange between players to make payments so that's what we have here with the token design functions you can make payments um if you want to make money and play and spend money um or you want to spend you want to stake your money and uh uh in the long term you know kind of invest um or the, or you can do governance which is kind of making sure that the treasury uh is kind of um maintained uh with, with all the fees and revenues that uh, also come in place you have to maintain a high treasury amount um which you can see right here uh i think it's uh 29 percent of the, the corporate treasury of the oh no 29 percent of tokens are staked so that's uh you know 
what you would also describe as, you know, uh, big money or um, the people who are kind of maintaining the big amounts of money. Um, so uh, I guess this is kind of a fancy way for me to say that, um, you know, I guess tokenomics and token design, um, they have uh, all kinds of people who uh, are agents, people who can control money, who are players. Um, and then there's some code which can control how much control the players can have and the impact of the overall economy. Uh, FTX specifically was not very well regulated, so um, another entity uh, like a, like Alameda was able to control a huge circulation of tokens, which are you know illiquid against collateral. So um, when there's you know very few checks and balances and there's no governance, then um, system agents in this case can be actually uh, quite manipulative of the entire system. Um, and uh, you can't follow ba basic principles of systems <laughs> because um, agents are kind of controlling the whole thing. So uh, here, in, I think in game economics, you can say that, uh, you know, people don't have a lot of control over the entire control, of, over the entire liquidity of the project. So um, uh, I think a lot of what we've covered so far in, maybe the token tokenomics business model here is um you know there's players who can who can trade who can spend money on tokens um but then kind of you know uh there's also other people who um who also want to make sure that the governance or the treasury is safe uh so another function of the token is not just for playing or paying it's also to make sure that it's maintaining the the treasury and uh always there's enough money to pay uh people for for exchanging tokens for um for uh for eat um and 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 so that's kind of what this is is uh this explains how how axie infinity works specifically the tokenomics of the axs token this one right here um so at a very high level um, I think this is kind of what I want to go over at a very deep level for today is um, the way that Axie Infinity works. So if you uh, are a player on Axie Infinity um, and you have chosen to uh, to play before 2021, whenever it came out in, in 2019, you would have to exchange uh, AXS tokens um, for ETH. And then you can exchange ETH for USD dollars. But then ETH has gas fees, very heavy gas fees. And so even though there are some tokenomics and uh, it's possible to um, liquidate AXS tokens into money, you, you, you'll make a lot of money. Um, but what happened recently is the business model changed. They, they made a new Ronin side chain. Um, and uh, the people who run the Axie Infinity um project are kind of in you know expert software engineers who are able to build their own protocol essentially um sidechain which means that they're able to create a bridge that connects um one network one protocol to another protocol um that actually allows them to uh create uh you know convert um axs tokens into eth without gas fees um because of the bridge now um so Chain, it wouldn't work, but because you have the Ronin sidechain, it's actually possible. Um, and so uh, kind of what this means is there's all kinds of ways to exchange um, tokens um, in the sidechain to make money, uh, which is quite elaborate. This business model slide is going to be kind of what I wanted to, to kind of go into depth with, which is, um, you know, uh if anyone's kind of kind of heard me talk about the the token econo token economics or crypto economic system um maybe you understand that uh you know depending on uh the supply of of how many tokens are there and how many players are actually involved um the value can go up or down so uh when there's a lot of economic players you can kind of inflate the value of assets um, similar to a bubble, but in a video game, um, if, if that bubble is sustained long enough, you can actually 
inflate the price of alternative alternative assets, which are in this case video game assets or NFTs. Um, you know, NFTs in, in today's market are in a recession kind of um, uh, worth zero because they're digital assets. But you know, um, you know, uh, in the Axie Infinity project, you know, ideally, um, there's a lot of players who are continuing to play, um, and that's what this is kind of supposed to show is the quantity of new players and it grows. Um, the prices of these tokens are always going to go up, um, which basically means that you can, um, you know, regardless of the economic conditions or if it's a recession, you can always play these games. And, um, uh, you know, what this other, what this picture in the bottom right shows is how you can create land. Um, it's going to be a new feature that rolls out at the end of this year, which is right now. Um, I don't play this game. But, but apparently this is rolled out recently um, and you can now make uh, land that is also made it that, that can also be sold as an NFT, um, which is also a token, right? And NFT is a non-fungible token. So um, you can sell all kinds of NFTs. You can sell land NFTs. You can sell, sell item NFTs. You can sell actual AXS token currency um, tokens like SLP tokens or AXS, AXS tokens or tokenized resources. So on the Ronin sidechain, there's all kinds of ways to sell alternative assets. Um, and that is kind of the key takeaway is, um, you know, when you're playing in a game with the tokenomics, um, you need to make sure that, uh, um, you know, it comes back to kind of the fundamentals and, and saying that, you know, uh, this is kind of the, the, the primary source of how the, the, the project makes money. Um, the project makes money by players who uh, actually control um, a large portion of of the actual uh, project. So, like project holders, um, those are kind of advisors who have eight percent or seven percent. Um, you know, uh, ecosystem funds have eleven percent. So, once you make it go public, maybe it'll be twenty percent stake uh, to the public. So. Um, you have to make sure that there's liquidity in all kinds of markets and there's people who uh, are kind of holding this asset. Um, uh, so there's a lot of ways to make sure that you have to make sure that the, the, the liquidity is being maintained. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure they have an optimizer. <laughs> I'm sure they have all kinds of uh, optimization design mechanisms um, to basically make sure that your 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 objective function is you know, uh, making sure the supply and demand is in reasonable ratios and then, you know, evaluating the fitness or measuring the system to make sure that you know that, um, you know, there's enough tokens in circulation that are being actively exchanged. Um, and you'll see all these things that later on in the end of the slide, the presentation, that this project performs quite well on all metrics because it's actively played. Um, and uh, basically the way that this, um, you know, game GameFi works is the, the tokenomics are well developed. And so this is definitely a success um, because uh, there's no easy way for someone to dominate the entire thing and control the entire system. So people actually have uh, good things to say about this project and, and how much money they, they can make from it. Uh, if anyone's played on this, I'd love to hear your... your um, your experience playing on, on the Axie Infinity project. Um, they've done quite well. Uh, um, if you can see that here, I, I don't think anyone comes even close to Axie Infinity in terms of their actual performance. Like uh, 508,000 traders is the biggest thing, like half a million um, people who are engaged in involved in, in the selling of all of all this uh nft stuff um a lot of users um so yeah no um definitely a sophisticated project uh you know we, we can kind of go more into maybe how the project works and uh you know the different ways that um you know the prices are kind of uh, inflated or or, or or exist the way that that they exist, but um, 
that's just like the game economics really so i guess kind of the most important thing here to say is um depending on the project depending on the network um there's all kinds of ways that uh these five maybe principles of token economic systems are going to be followed um and relevant because uh, at the end of the day, a project is going to have to maintain liquidity to, to always ensure that people can make payments, um, people can actually make money. That's one of the principal designs of token design is to make money. Um, and then another key aspect of tokenomic systems is to, um, you know, basically, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, have governance uh, and make sure that um uh you know it's always kind of a, a safe way for people to exchange and play and uh have fun you know play at the same time and then yeah you know kind of serve as a way for people to invest and make money as well so uh yeah that kind of covers all the aspects of tokenomics um and kind of how game fi um, allows that to happen through software. Um, hopefully that explains it. Uh, definitely ways that you can apply the code uh, directly to the, the game uh, through the actual smart contract code. Um, that I don't know how to do, but that's probably the most unique part about this project. So um, that allows the tokenomics to work and continue to make money and uh, expand as a project. So that's kind of all I have really to present. Um, hopefully this made sense, uh, kind of how you can get involved um, in how the project itself actually continues to make more money um, as a business. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the user experience, how you can make money playing, how the project as well with the tokenomics and uh, how it can continue to grow and uh, there's a, a lot of room for growth um as you can see here all of this is very new and yeah i think this is um probably a successful project that people can say tokenomics has applied very well um, and it's easy to understand so uh, maybe a shorter workshop today but wanted to get to um some of the key points let me know if you have anything else you want me to cover if anyone has any questions um, what, what did you think about this one? Any thoughts? Maybe any, anything you want me to cover maybe more in detail, uh, specifically? Uh, Giark, your recording? Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. Uh, Rilisa, is there anything else you wanted me to maybe cover? Um, was this fine for time, I guess, today? I think someone's typing. Um, okay, okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, just a quick question. Do you see any other uh, similar projects uh, with uh, uh, token economics like Axie Infinity that uh, you see interested? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I think, um, you know, what I'm slowly starting to learn, um, is actually that, uh, NFT markets or, um, you know, actual, like, uh, real world things, um, that are sold as NFTs or, uh, and anything related to NFTs uh, creates a lot of transaction flow where people who, um, you know, continue to, to transact and that, 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 that supply of 
of um, economic value is created because um, at the end of the day, you know, kind of a lot of these things are alternative assets. You have to understand that um, for the token economics to work, there really has to be some value to the to what you're transacting. So uh, what I've seen is a project um, uh, related to wine and basically you can trade people, uh, you can trade NFTs of people and then you actually share, you give your ownership of wine to someone else. Uh, I forget what the project's actually called, but you can trade ownership of physical wine and it's sold as an NFT. So um, that's like one way where you can physically transact in something that people would want to claim digital ownership of. Um, so things like that, I feel like, uh, you know, same thing applies here, right? Like uh, Axie Infinity is at the end of the day, it's an NFT marketplace. Um, so NFTs are uh, are simply tokens that are being exchanged. Um, and that's how the tokenomics are, are applied. Uh, but it really depends on uh, the project. So that's why, you know, what I've seen with NFTs is they apply tokenomics well. Um, because tokenomics is, is inherent in the value of a product that's being exchanged. Here, it's like something that's a land NFT collectible, and 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 something like that wine example. It's a physical collectible you can drink out of, and, you know. Um, so I wish I could tell you the name of that project, but um, uh, yeah. Either way, um, I could definitely go into into more depth with other projects that might be out there, but um. You know, there's there's not a whole lot of projects. I would say that the the number of projects is is quite um, with strong fundamentals is, is quite small, uh, and that's actually what I've learned as well. Is uh, it's it's tough <laughs> to find a project that really uh, has a good fundamentals. So, um, gamify gamify uh, game finance is really the the best one to do. Um, yeah. There's another one called um, Mint, you know, Mint IO. I can maybe share this one. Um, let me share this one right here. Uh, how do you share it? Let's see. Uh, one. Try to figure out how to share. You can post Just in a public voice open chat. Ah, uh, there we go. Cool. Um, oh. Which competitor do you see for AXS? I just saw this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is also what I was going to say was um, I saw this today. Uh, you can basically um, buy uh, you can buy vertical farms, which are basically ways for you to uh, grow um, plants uh, in your house or uh, somewhere else. And you can buy these and you can buy them on uh on the near protocol and it's like an nft that you buy um so here you can see it. it says you can sell nfts related to the hydroponic plants we grow and um they call them planned nfts um so this is also an interesting project you can see some tokenomics there um uh hopefully that was helpful i saw that today um uh, but but the tokenomics is like you know um it's not the first it's not the primary import it's not the most important thing whenever it's kind of the most important thing and you have to make sure that the tokenomics work out then uh you know like 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 for example trade fi like that's a huge uh tokenomics system that needs to be well built otherwise it's like a big deal if it is if it defaults or people don't have money to cover liquidity um those are huge markets so game fi or um I don't know, like uh, in this case, plant fire, NFT fire, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call it. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, that would be my best answer to your question. Is some there's some tokenomics around this one, sure. Vertical farms and um, how NFTs have some value. That makes sense. Uh, so 
Um, Danzy, or is, is Danzy still here? Um, okay, he already left. Um, which competitors do you see for AXS? Alien Worlds. Um, I don't know what Alien, Alien Worlds is. I should look into that. Um, let's see. Alien Worlds. Uh, Alien Worlds. All right. Um, sorry. If anyone else has any questions, let me know. Um, I do not know what Alien Worlds is, but I'm curious. Uh, I don't know what the competitors are for AXS, uh, but I'm curious. Definitely very curious uh, because I think they're doing very well. Um, Sorry, I cannot answer your other question, Dan Z, but you're not here. Uh, and Pizza hopefully answered your question. Any, anyone else? Anything else? No, thank you. Um, who is uh, recording? I guess I'm curious. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think um, Lisa invited the bot, but we can stop it. Okay, okay, just making sure. That's that's. I was just wondering. <laughs> uh, anyways, I will adjourn then. Um, hopefully, I'll, hopefully, I was able to answer some questions. Uh, thank you. I hope everyone has a good rest of your day. Um, thank you for joining. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.